Hello from uh, Friedrichshafen, Germany. I have here Wojciech here with the M17 project. And if you don't know what the M17 is, it's a new digital radio ecosystem that is uh, gaining a lot of buzz. And I'm, I'm very lucky to, to have an interview here with Wojciech. Hello. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself in terms of you know, what inspired you to, first of all, get into ham radio? All right, so uh, I don't actually remember when I was mm, licensed. I believe it was 2016. So I'm quite a fresh ham radio operator. I don't have much experience in uh, like contests and stuff like that. So after being uh, licensed for three years, I have decided to, uh, well, maybe let's start with uh, how I got into amateur radio. Yes. So I was always uh, excited about technology and radio in general. So I was always a big fan of using walkie-talkies as a, as a kid. Right. So we used to use walkie-talkies uh, to talk with... Uh, I used walkie-talkies to talk with my friends uh, from the same neighbor neighborhood. Mm. And that was when it started. I was like maybe 11 years old. I was very young. So after some experiments, uh, I have decided that probably electronics and radio in general is very interesting uh, field of like for development for as a hobby and as an interest so I have developed that interest uh, very early so yeah. after that uh, after a long time uh, okay so after a few years uh, in 2016 I have decided to take the exam and get certified uh, licensed and I have joined my local club in Warsaw, right. in Poland, the capital city of Poland, where we were very active on DMR, Tetra, and we were very uh, interested in how digital voice modes work. Also encrypted, because in Poland it's apparently uh, legal to do so. Oh, nice. Yes, it's very nice to know because it's not what everyone can do, like right. in the, U the US. Yes. It's forbidden. Right, yes. But in Poland, is everything that is not illegal is legal. So we took that way. And uh, I have implemented, I have started reading about Tetra a lot. I have printed out a lot of documents on Tetra and DMR from ETSI. And that is the European uh, Standard Committee for uh, Telecommunication Standards. So I have read a lot uh, about Tetra and got inspired and decided to create our own mode. So the name M17 comes after the street address of the club that I was a member of back then. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. Yes. Some people asked me that question, so I think it would be nice to tell. Yes. So uh, tell us how, how you, you M17 was born and how it was named, right? Yeah, so M17 was born in Warsaw, in Poland. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started as an experiment. It was uh, actually it was something more than a weekend project because uh, it took me quite a while to get Codec 2 running. And Codec 2 is an open source voice coder that is also used by uh, 3DV, which oh, yeah. is quite popular on HF. But there was no uh, so like on HF you can use 3DV, which is completely open source but you don't have any equivalent for uh, any replacement for DMR and DSTAR and stuff like that for... MB on A, on the MB, yeah. yeah. At least you didn't have back then in 2016. Right. So my decision was to create something new and create an alternative way for the amateur radio operators to use. Right, that's a very good story of M17 and um, it seems very fantastic. But in Poland, you mentioned you have encryption. So, um, how? But let me ask a different question. How? Uh, how? What's the process to get a, an amateur license in Poland? Well, you have to take an exam, and mm -hmm. the exam is very simple. Actually, it's not that hard. We've got at least two different uh, categories. So there is category A and C, if I remember correctly. There is also category number five, which is for repeaters. If you want right. to run a repeater. You don't have to take an exam, you just have to have your license beforehand. 
and then you just pick the call sign and you can run the repeater. You oh. also have to select uh, a pair of frequencies to operate on. Right. Uh, so to take the exam, you have to pay some some fee to take it. Then you go to the uh, to the office. You take the oral exam and yeah. written exam, which is A B C D, just okay. a quiz. Oh. And uh, mm, you have an oral oral exam. What is that like? Uh, the oral exam is based on actually uh, spelling okay. and operator procedures. Right. So it's like a simulated QSO with the examiner. Right. So it's quite easy. Okay. So M17. So you said it started as an experiment, right? That's right. And that's that's a very good thing. What was the the goal of this experiment? Well, the goal was to explore the world of uh, open source voice codecs and uh, create an alternative for DMR. Okay. Because DMR is very popular in Poland and throughout Europe, as I can see, and there is no alternative for it. And we were just trying to probe and see if it's actually doable and if something can be actually done to help amateur radio operators to uh, like bring back the roots of amateur radio, which is experimenting. Exactly. And that can be done actually with, with DMR because I don't see many people playing with DMR and sending arbitrary payloads, for example. And that would be very hard to do. Uh, the standard itself is hard to read. It's convoluted. Right. And by contrast, M17 is much clearer to read and I think it's it's more accessible for amateur radio operators. So I think you touched on a lot of the values behind M17, right? Because we deal with values where yep. uh, we we prioritize things that you know that make it good for humans yeah. to like know. accessibility. Accessibility is one thing. The openness, so it's open source, right? Meaning anybody can take in an experiment with it. Also. Um, you mentioned also making it easy to read. Yes, that's right. Because we think that uh, technology shouldn't be convoluted and right. it should be understood by people okay. and especially users. Right. Because what we have right now is basically uh, a generation of people that are just um, appliance users. So right. they, most of the time, digital voice, voice mode users just buy a radio, press the PTT yes. and transmit. They don't actually know what's going on, and they are they just rely on what the big manufacturers have to offer. And we want we really want to change that. And okay. we are on a good way to achieve That's good. It. Yeah, so they download a code plug and they put it in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Press the PTT and, and that's it. Okay. So you want to change that. So in terms of like the um, the actual software is open source and so how do so let's say I want to get on M17. How do I All do right. that? So there are many different options, actually. Okay. At least two that I can think of that right. are very easy. So the first one would be to uh, order a module 17, mm -hmm. which is an open source modem for M17. That's module 17. Uh, the whole specification for it, uh, the documentation, I mean uh, the schematic, the code plug, it's all open source. Okay. So you can order at your favorite fab house, PCB fab house. Right. Uh, so that's solution number one. You buy the board. Uh, actually, if you want to buy it, you would have to buy at least five, probably. Right. So it would be best if you shared with your friends. Okay. Which is uh, a good part but of it. Sharing is caring, yes. <laughs> yeah, sharing is caring, and the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. So one of the solutions is, yes, buying uh, a module 17, connect it to a radio that supports 9600 bits per second uh, mm. TNCs. Okay. And the other solution would be to buy an MD3AD or a similar radio, which can be bought from Amazon in Europe and in the US too, I believe. Right. And perform a very small modification. It is not really complex at all. It comprises of a uh, replacement of a few resistors, okay. capacitor, and adding two kind of kinner wires, right. so two jumper wires, and that's it. You okay. flash the radio and you transmit and receive M17. You know, I, I think I saw somebody with that at Dayton had mentioned, Bruce Perrin's K6BP. Yes, he had one. Yes. In an acrylic case. Right, yeah, yes. That and was it. I have a couple of MD380s, so when I get home, I'm going to do soldering. 
<laughs> Very good. <laughs> okay, now um, we had somebody stop by the ARDC booth and ask about the repeaters. So if you have a repeater, um, it's probably a little more difficult, right? Yes, so if you want to run a repeater, you probably would be best to use uh, MMDVM, which okay. supports M17. Mm -hmm. And it's worth notice, uh, noting that MMDVM fully supports M17. Okay. That is mm, not something that many people know, and I want people to know that okay. MMDVM supports M17. Good. Thank you, Jonathan Naylor, G4K Alex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we saw him yesterday, and also... Yes. Um, he was here, yeah. I have like a zoom spot. Which yeah, zoom spot supports M17. Yes, so you can also use like the little hotspots too, right? Yes, that's correct. You can use a hotspot mm -hmm. for your uh, local coverage, right. but if you want to go a uh, wider area, you would have to use MMDVM with two radios, a duplexer and right. a proper antenna on a mast. Okay, so um, you don't do this by yourself, you have a team, right? And I know some of your team, like Ed in the United States, so tell us a little bit about the team. Yeah, so the team is international. We've yes. got guys from United States. We've got people from Poland, right. Ita Italy. Okay. We've got support from Germany. Right. For example, DB9 mm -hmm. Matis, which does great work with Module 17s. Right. Then we've got uh, contributors from all around the world, like Australia. We've got Tony, VK3, JED. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Yes, we've got Ed and 2XDD over there in United States in right. uh, on Log Island, right? New York. Then we, yes, we've got Steve, we've got Mike, uh, mm -hmm. W2FBI. Oh, okay. And that's about it, I think. Yeah. For the core team, of course, right. because we've got also a massive amount of contributors worldwide, coming from Twitter, Discord, right. Matrix, Mastodon. So, GitHub even. Yeah, so let's say you wanted to become a contributor. Let's say I, I took your source code and I wrote a module. Mm -hmm. uh, do I notify, do I just do like a pull request or something? Or Yes, pull requests are welcome. Uh -huh. uh, probably your code is going to be uh, reviewed by us before right, we course. add it. Mm -hmm. Maybe with some modifications, but yes, yes it's of course doable. Okay. If you want to contribute, just open up a pull request mm -hmm. and we are going to review it. And yeah. most likely we are going to add it to the code base. Good. So for those of you unfamiliar with this, so basically you have um, in software development, we use like a source code management system where the source code goes in and different people can contribute via something called a pull request. And then the authors of the software will assign people to approve or deny or approve with modifications these pull requests and then they get merged into the one of the branches of the code. So, That's right. It yeah. also concerns the specification document itself. Right. Because uh, the specification document is written in LaTeX. Or okay. LaTeX. I'm actually, I don't know how to pronounce that. Right, LaTeX anyway, is how you pronounce it, yes. Anyway, yeah, uh, so we use that for the specification document and uh, we are open to uh, pull, re pull requests for the specification document too. Okay. So not only the code. So what has been like the, the reaction from people with regard to M17? Well, reactions are mostly positive because okay. people actually were waiting for it. It's right. like a dry lake that, sh that sees some rain. It's <laughs> like a, f a fresh a breeze example, yes. for the ham radio. So people are like relieved that something like this exists. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's good because, you know, um, in the digital world of amateur radio, you have all these commercial manufacturers competing to be a standard. Whereas you have something open that people can, you know, use freely um, in terms of like, I don't like to say free in terms of money, but that too, but also free in terms of speech, mm -hmm. right? So software is speech. Mm -hmm. So you have free available where people can hack into it and, you know, use it. And I think I think we want M17 to be the standard. Yeah, so uh, one of the advantages of M17 is that we are not relying on any, we are not chained to any manufacturer. Exactly. So no one tells us what to do and how to do it. Good. Like, for example, uh, in DMR protocol, uh, to use it, you probably have to use uh, a centralized database for IDs. So right. you have to register. 
whereas in M17, to transmit, you just need to have a call sign, mm -hmm. which is unique already, so there is no need to register anywhere. So no. we are not relying on any manufacturer and any solution that they bring. Right. Yeah. And that's great. I think you know any an amateur radio needs to stay decentralized. That's right. So let me ask you a little bit about ARDC. So ARDC has funded some of M17, and it's one of the, the things that, frankly, we like to see, because we like to see this sort of development. So tell us how, you know, what sort of a difference it has made for M17. Yeah, so uh, without the help from ARDC, the project would be probably most likely stalled by now. Mm -hmm. So all of the help that we have received is uh, really appreciated. Okay. And without them, we wouldn't be able to uh, reach the point that we are in right now. We would be like, uh, instead of having some hardware going on right now, working, yeah. we would be still playing with the specification document and we wouldn't be able to uh, develop the protocol as fast as we are doing today. Okay. Well, you know, we're always glad to help and um, we love the things that are going on with M17. We can't see, wait to see where it brings it into the future. Do you have any hints of what's coming up in the future? Yes, of course. Uh, I can tell you that we are working on OpenHD project, okay. which is uh, very widely accepted and acclaimed. And people are very uh, eager to see it working. And I don't know about any ham radio operator that wouldn't drool about it, about the radio. <laughs> yes. Uh, because it's an um, open source handheld, that it's, um, it's an SDR. Ah. So every mode is supported. Not only FM, AM, SSB, but also higher order modulations like 4FSK, 60QAM, APRS, okay. anything. You name it, we've got it. Nice. Uh, and it's a dual band, so it supports 70 centimeter band and 2.4 gigahertz. Which oh, is okay. a pretty rare combination, but right. we had to use it because that's uh, governed by the RF chip that we use. So it no. wasn't entirely our decision. Now, one more thing, since we are in Europe, you know, we have the satellite, the... That's right. Are you, you're using M17 on that? Uh, we have tested M17 over Q100, in uh -huh. fact, uh, two years ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And the test, my test was the first one. Okay. And after a year, uh, so uh, I have failed that year. Okay. And after a year, uh, a guy called Charles, uh, G4GO from right. United Kingdom. Yes, Charles uh, Brain. Yeah, he repeated that test and he succeeded. Oh, very nice. So he transmitted M17 over Q100 and received the signal and decoded it. Very nice. So that's always good to hear technical innovations. Well, Wojciech, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ria. And thank you for granting the interview. And look, uh, can you give us the website m17project.org? That's right. m17project.org is our website and you can find any information you need on the project, uh, including the GitHub, uh, the specification document, and all the links that you need. The Twitter feed, Mastodon feed, the Discord channel, uh, the Matrix channel, everything is there. All right, very good. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check out the website and look forward to more great projects. Peace in 73. 73.